Ever pinch pennies all year for that one family vacation only to feel the budget blues afterward? If so, I was just like you. After three long vacationless years, I stumbled upon travel hacking and cracked the code to amazing vacations that I could actually afford. Welcome to Hacking Your Wanderlust. In this podcast, you will discover how opening credit cards strategically can save you thousands on travel. We're not just dreamers anymore. We're two adventurous moms turning dreams into reality. Join us as we spill all the travel hacking secrets. And contrary to popular belief, traveling on points and miles isn't reserved for the elite or those with overflowing bank accounts. It's for everyday people like you and me learning to turn routine expenses into free travel. Consider us your travel hacking guides. This is Hacking Your Wanderlust. Let the adventure begin. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to the Hacking Your Wanderlust podcast. We are so excited to have you as we look ahead to a new year of travel adventures, travel hacking, saving money. This is actually New Year's for you guys, but to be honest, we are recording this a few days before Christmas. I'm your co-host, Mary Ellen. And I am Joe. Happy New Year's, everyone. We are so excited that you are back with us. We hope that you are having an amazing Amazing New Year so far. Day one for you. As we said, we are still back here right before Christmas time. So uh, we're looking into the future and hoping that all of you are having an amazing New Year's Day. So, Mary Ellen, anything happen in this past week that you want to share with our lovely listeners? Yeah, we did go on a fun little travel adventure. We went up to New York City to soak in some of the Christmas vibes up there. We went ice skating, which was super fun. I always love that. Although the rental ice skates, I must say, are one of the more painful things in all Mm -hmm. of life, I think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it was still lovely. I would still do it again. But man, those rental ice skates. (laughs) I I know we have an ice skating rink by our house that we like to go to and every time I put those things on I'm like is this is this torture? They should use it as a torture device. I know. It's horrible. I know, but we had a lot of fun in the city. We went to a Mariah Carey concert, just me and my oldest daughter, which was really fun. We did not go to New York for that reason, but she happened to be there, so we enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, I should say. It was at the end of a <laughs> Very long day of city adventures. And so my sweet, sweet third grade daughter may have fallen asleep, but (laughs) I love her. I forgive her for falling asleep during Mariah. It's just, it was such a fun day of adventure. You know how you have a tendency to pack too much in when you go places? I think I may have gotten a little zealous with my trip planning to think that she could go to a concert at 8 p.m. after a day in the city. But we had fun, and it definitely put us in the Christmas spirit. What about you, Joanna? Oh, my gosh. We had uh, such an amazing weekend. We went to celebrate Christmas with my in-laws in um, Springfield, Missouri. So close to Springfield, Missouri is Branson, Missouri, the home of Silver Dollar City. Which, I hear of Branson. Never uh, been there, but it's kind of legendary. It It is. And, you know, I always kind of wonder if it's going to die out a little, but then I go at Christmas time and I'm like, wow, there are still a gazillion people here. So clearly it's, you know, if you go to Springfield as often as we do because we have family there and you see it in the off season, it gets a little nerve wracking. Like, are, are these businesses sustainable? Um, but during Christmas and especially Silver Dollar City at Christmas, it's just incredible. They have shows and every square inch of the place is decked out in lights. I posted a couple of videos about it over on my Instagram. And I was going to mention that if people want to see a really fun clip from the Mariah Carey show, they should look at your Instagram because that video was amazing. I was so jealous. Uh, next time I have learned, next time I'm taking you because yeah! my daughter, she's it's not me. ready for it. I volunteer as tribute. Absolutely. Take me with you. You're yeah. on. So that was that was our weekend. It was so fun. We had such a nice time with family and, you know, Silver Dollar City, even in the rain, totally worth it. It was just so stunning. And I could not tell it was raining from your videos. It looked lovely. 
<laughs> well, that is because I was very good at pulling out of my uh, pulling out my phone just in the breaks between the rain. I did get a few horrible rain videos right at the beginning, and I was like, "This looks miserable." We were actually having a really fun time, although. I do have to say that my 11-year-old is not a fan of the rain. So she really perked up when we went into a show and then came out and the rain had stopped. That that kind of brought her back to life because, you know, when you're 11, you don't like to have wet hair. It's a thing. Well, you know, cold cold rain isn't exactly anybody's. No, and we rode a roller coaster. It was still running in the cold rain. So it felt like – Oh, felt wow. like ice pellets hitting your face. It was, it was oh wild. Gosh. It was, it was an adventure. Um, so yeah, that was, that was our weekend. And then this, this past week, um, at my job where I am a nanny household manager, I'm not even sure if I've mentioned that before. Um, I got to take the kiddos to pick out a bunch of, um, stuff for an animal shelter and took them and we donated oh, wow. all of them and visited with the animals. And like that, was as good as Silver Dollar City to me. It is That is so sweet. It was so fun. And I had just recently rescued a dog that I found running down the street who was still there at the shelter. So we got to visit with her. And it was just like, I don't know, it's just been a really nice week. And I'm so happy to be here talking with you now about yes. Venture X and about staying organized, which I know is not as glamorous as a fun credit card, but very important. I know. I think it's great, especially heading into the new year. We've got a lot of listeners who are very new in the travel hacking game or looking towards the future, like, how am I going to make this work for our family? And so talking about VentureX is a great option. It's a very popular credit card, but then also the piece of staying organized as you start to maybe get two or three of these travel hacking cards, maybe more, you really do need to stay on top of your organization. So Let's dive in. Let's first chat about the Venture X. And then, Joanna, I know you have so many tips to help keep us organized. So I'm excited for that because I need it. I need your help in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a skill of mine. It's basically my entire job in the real world. And so it nicely transfers over to uh, this space as well. But first, since you are the Venture X queen, and I do not have this card yet because I've been primarily focusing on chase points for so long, you are going to take it away with all of these details. Um, starting with, I would think right now, what's the sign up bonus looking like? What's the spend? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so the regular sign up bonus for the Venture X is going to be 75,000 points. That's worth about $750. So that's a pretty healthy sign up bonus. That's more than a lot of standard sign up bonuses for these flexible point currency cards is more like 60,000. So I think 75,000 is is a good solid sign up bonus even when it's not elevated. I have seen it be 90,000, but 75 is still very much worth signing up for the Venture X. The annual fee, I know you're curious about that. Yep, tell me what's the damage. Okay, annual fee. I know we've mentioned this before. Don't be scared of annual fees because <laughs> we're going to tell you how to offset it. So the annual fee for the VentureX is $395. Oh, boy. I know there's some sticker shock there. A little bit. A little, a little bit hefty. But it is a premium travel card. So mm -hmm. it's one of the nicer cards. It gives you some really nice benefits. And Right off the bat, I, I like this card because it's very easy to offset the annual fee. You get a $300 portal credit to use in the Capital One portal. Okay. So that, yeah, that, that takes away a lot of that. You kind of think of that $395 more as this is what I'm investing in travel this year. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know I'm going to use that $300 credit in the travel portal at some point to book a hotel or book a car. Is it easy to find that kind of stuff in there? For, you know that the $50 credit in the Chase portal doesn't get you very far. So are the rates in the Capital One portal reasonable where 300 feels like you're going to really get something for that investment? Well, one of the things Capital One advertises is that they price match. So they say that their portal 
is legit. Like sometimes portals, eh, you know, the pricing isn't great. And I usually will compare portals because I have Capital One, I have Amex, I have Chase. I'll pull up the same hotel in all three portals just to make sure that, okay, am I good? And pull it up on, you know, Hotwire or whatever mm-hmm. various websites I can find just to make sure that it's not like an inflated price. Right. And Capital One advertises that they price match. So I feel better about using the Capital One portal than sometimes other portals. So oh, that's actually awesome. What did you say that the minimum spend is on this? I know it's 75,000 points. What, is, what are we spending to get that? So you need to spend $4,000 in three months time. So it's pretty doable in three months, $4,000. Yeah, that's a great, I mean, that's a lot less than a lot of them. Most, I feel like six seems to be the average. So that's an easy one to get. Yeah. And so with that annual fee, going back to the annual fee, you had the $300 in the portal, but then you also get 10,000 points, anniversary points each year. So that's worth $100. So right Mm -hmm. off the bat, that $395, you got 300 portal credit and you get 10,000 points worth $100. So that wipes away that annual fee and your $5 on the good side right off the bat without taking advantage of any of the other benefits. So that's why when I saw that annual fee, I was like, okay, it's pretty easy to see how I can offset this. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a great deal, actually. Yeah. So one of the other benefits that was helpful for me and also helped put me in the good as far as that annual fee is they offer $100 towards global entry or TSA pre-check. And I actually did not have, yeah, I didn't have a card yet that had TSA pre-check. So I did right off the bat use that credit. And I was excited about that because let me tell you a little story. Oh, I love stories. Story time. Okay. Story time. My husband already had a card that gave him TSA pre-check. He actually also had something called Clear, a Clear membership Mm -hmm. through his Amex Platinum card. And so when we would go to airports, he and the kids would go right on through with his little Clear membership and TSA pre-check and left me in the standard security line. No. I would just watch them from afar and wave (laughs) my little fingers. Yes, it gets worse too. It gets worse. Another reason that I wanted the Venture X is because it gives better lounge access, airport lounge access for our family because we already had that Amex Platinum card. So my husband, again, had lounge access and he could take the kids into the lounge, but we couldn't get every member of our family into the lounge. So he would just fly on through security and then go into the little lounge, leaving me a peasant on the outside. A peasant. Um, I don't know. That might be grounds for divorce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took matters into my own hands and got my VentureX card. And yeah, now okay. we have full lounge access for our whole family through Priority Pass lounges. Um, and I have even better lounge access than him, really. The huh? VentureX... I think it gives better, overall, better lounge access than Amex Platinum. That's my personal opinion. Amex has great lounges, and we're going to cover that. We actually have a guest coming on that's going to cover all the Amex Platinum um, perks with us. But it's good to mention it because VentureX and Amex Platinum are definitely kind of two cards in the same category, along with Chase Sapphire Reserve, that people usually compare to kind of decide which one might be the best fit for them. Well, that's amazing. I guess that sounds a little bit more reasonable than my divorce idea. You just get better lounge access now. So you don't have to be left on the outside anymore. Um, Have you gotten to use the TSA PreCheck since you've gotten it, or is this relatively new for you? I have used it. I did use it. And I mean, some, I swear some airports, I don't know. Sometimes I think the pre-check line is just as long as the regular line, but other places it really does save you time because so many people are getting TSA pre-check now through credit cards, but some places it does save time and it's nice to have. It's not, you know, a deal breaker for me, but it was one of those things that it was free with having the VentureX card. You know, they covered the membership. It's good for five years. So I went ahead and did it and I'm glad I have it, but not a deal breaker. Do you have it? Right. 
I don't have it yet. I know that one of the Southwest business cards that I'm going to be getting comes with the credit. So I was waiting for that. But you are right. It seems like more and more people have it nowadays. And I didn't realize that it was only, what is it, $100 for like five years or something like that. I didn't know that until I got into the travel hacking game. And then I was kind of like, oh, why doesn't everybody do this. I kind of like that that's not well advertised. You just think these are really special people with their pre-check. They must be businessmen and the, you know, people that travel all the time. I mean, it's yeah. really cheap, but I do love a credit card that just takes care of that for you. That is right. so awesome. Yeah, I'm all about that. So that's one of the benefits. And I will say, I think TSA PreCheck is like $75, even cheaper for the five years. Global entry is slightly different and it is Mm -hmm. more like $100, but global entry includes TSA PreCheck. TSA PreCheck does not include global entry. That's not what all of this episode is about, but it's worth looking into all of that before you decide which route is better for you. Absolutely. I mean, if you're going to be going out of the country, I know it's a longer interview process, but you might as well go for the global entry. Yeah, global entry does. It is a little bit harder to get, but it's still very doable and worth it if you do a lot of international travel. For sure. Okay, give me the rundown on points we can accumulate with this card. I'm sure there are special categories. There are. And so, well, one of the reasons I will say overall that I like the VentureX card is because you don't have to think too hard about categories. It gets a flat two times points on everything, like across the board. Very much love that. Better than one time point on everything. And then there are a couple things that you get bonus points on. So you get 10 times points on car rentals and and hotels. 10? Five. 10, 10. Oh my gosh. Your portal. So that's, that's, oh, okay. the, yeah, that's the catch there. 10 times points on car rentals and hotels through the portal. And then five times on flights through the capital one portal. Now, again, they say they price match. So the capital one portal is supposed to be fairly legitimate with their pricing. And so I have used that 10 times points on car rentals for a couple trips, actually, that we have coming up this year, I decided to use that for the, yeah, for the 10 times points. Instead of the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So does it come with a rental coverage the way the CSP does? does. Oh, it does? It does. It has primary rental car protection. And 10x points. And 10x points. It has also, and this is, eh, I mean, it's another one of those things that's good to have, not necessarily the reason you get the card. It has Hertz President Circle. So that's a perk that when you book a Hertz rental car, you also get things like a free upgrade. You can have an additional driver for free. So we could have both my husband or I drive either one. So a couple little small, you're supposed to be able to like pick whatever car you want from the lot at Hertz. I mean, you know. Okay, that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind of fun. But the card does have that primary rental car protection, which is huge. That is awesome. I am, you know, every time I talk to you about a card that I don't have yet, I get very excited. And my my card list is getting so long, it's almost like sad to me. It's like my reading list, like all the books (laughs) I want to read, all the cards I want to get. I'm like, do I have enough time in my life to acquire all these cards? We have to tell the listeners. It was hilarious. The other day I messaged (laughs) Joe about a card that I'm considering getting. I'm like, man, I know this isn't like the ideal way to do this for travel hacking, but I really want this credit card. And she's like, ah, I don't know about that. Think about your 524. And then by the time (laughs) I went through my reasoning, she's like, why do now I want to sign up for that card too? (laughs) You totally convinced me. You had a very convincing pitch. And by the end, not only was I not skeptical about you doing it, I was like, oh, me too. Let's just do it together. (laughs) I love it. So this VentureX card, it definitely does need to be on that list of cards that you have. I'll tell you, though, the ultimate reason why I ended up getting the card. There was one thing that made me want this card and compared to other cards, move this to the top of the list for me. And that was the ability. So this card also has transfer partners. Okay. Just like 
Amex, just like Chase. There are transfer partners that you can send your points to. You can also just cash in your points for, you can kind of erase. That's their big thing is they say, oh, erase travel purchases. Mm -hmm. So like our last, or a couple episodes ago, when we talked about hacking Disney, if you buy Disney tickets through some of the special websites where it codes as travel, you can erase that. And so it's a good way for people to use points for things that maybe traditionally you couldn't use points for. So that's one way to use these points. But the reason I got it for my family was because of one specific travel partner. And I don't know if you know this. Can you guess? Any ideas, Joe? I'm wondering if it's the Vacasa. Girl. Like my beloved Airbnb. Except that's very hard to hack. And uh, the Vacasa, I hear, is not. Yes. And so Capital One, with either the regular Venture Card or Venture X Card, can transfer points to Wyndham Hotels. And Wyndham Hotel points can be used to book Vacasa rentals, which are like, if you're not familiar with them, they are similar to Airbnb. The business structure is set up a little bit differently for the host, but it's very similar to an Airbnb rental. And the reason why I wanted that was because so often our family loves to travel hack national parks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes national parks just are not in places where there are hotels or where there's Hyatt hotels that I love transferring chase points to. Sometimes they're kind of tucked away in more remote locations, but you can find a Vacasa rental. Oh my gosh, that is really, really exciting. I have never used it. I always go Airbnb, but I know for sure if I had this card, obviously I would be looking at the Vicasas. Um, Tell me about their pricing structure when it comes to points. Do the hosts set a price? Is it a, a point per dollar amount? Or and Tell me about that. So the way they do it is very easy. It's 15,000 points per bedroom per night. So if you have a one bedroom rental, it's 15,000 points for the night. And that's great because a family of five can often fit in a one bedroom rental. Maybe they have a sofa bed or sometimes it's a full condo. So it's more than you're going to get in a tiny little hotel room. Mm -hmm. It might be one bedroom, like a hotel room, but it's like a whole condo. So you have a kitchen, you have a living room. And so for 15,000 points a night, which is, you know, roughly $150. So that's a good deal. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that's if five nights is your sign up bonus on this card. And especially right. if the points don't change based on where you are. So you're telling me like you go to a Vacasa in Hawaii that has one bedroom, it's still 15,000 points a night. It's 15,000 points. Okay, yep. love that. I love that too. So I I specifically had in mind a trip up to the Pacific Northwest. Their Vacasa has kind of a large footprint in the Seattle area. And so I wanted to get to a couple national parks up there. And I thought this is the way to go because there's really not a hotel that fits our needs, but there are Vacasa rentals. And that's why I ended up targeting the VentureX card. So again, it goes back to I had a travel goal in mind, and that's why I chose this credit card. Sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, let me just get this credit card, this credit card. But I love when people have a travel goal in mind because specific credit cards work better than others depending on your goal. Yes, you know that fits right in line with my whole organization strategy and how much I love that. I think there's one more thing we should mention about the Vicasa, and that is you don't have to clean up after yourself the same way you do in an Airbnb. It's I have stayed in both. Uh, we usually get a Vacasa rental at the beach where we go with some friends mm-hmm. and we have done it through Airbnb, but we've also done it through Vacasa. And because they have their own cleaning service that comes in, they sent the most refreshing little email at the end of our trip. It was like, if you have time, throw the sheets into the washing machine but don't stress about it versus having like a two page itemized list of all these cleaning tasks that we have to do before we leave the house. I am so obsessed with my Airbnb rating that every time we leave an Airbnb, I am like running around, like stripping the beds and wiping the counters. And I'm like, why do I do this to myself? Also, there's usually a huge cleaning fee at Airbnbs. So well, I think Vicasa has that kind of packed in, but if you're using the 15, 
thousand, yeah, exactly. The points. the points. I mean, you're not going to be like, oh, I thought I knew how much I was spending, but there's a two hundred dollar cleaning fee on top of it. It's just rolled right in. Yeah. Love so that. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be all about using um, Venture X points for Wyndham hotels, and then over to Vacasa. You do have to call, I believe, to do that booking. So that's my plan. I have it on our agenda. Okay, that is amazing. Also, it's always good to know when you have to call. <laughs> I don't know why in this day and age, anytime you have to make a phone call to get something accomplished, it feels like a big task. It's it's not that big of a deal, guys. You can make the phone call. It's okay. It's true. You can send the points to Wyndham just easily online, mm -hmm. but then you have to call to make the Vacasa booking. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. There was one more thing I'm going to say about Capital One before we move on. And please, guys, email us any questions. We would love to have questions from you guys at hackingyourwanderlust at gmail.com. Shoot us over any questions about cards. We're happy to kind of do a little um, talk to you personally about what might work well for your family. Capital One is a little bit notoriously weird and picky with their approvals. So if you end up applying for a Venture or Venture X card, you may be instantly approved. You also might need to go into review and they might take a little time or might ask you to send some documents. Don't be offended. I have definitely had friends with a better credit score than me apply for the Venture X and get sent to approval, you know, sent to review, mm. whereas mine was instantly approved. So there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason. Sometimes we can know data points for like Chase's 524 rule. We know something that Chase is looking for that you haven't opened more than five cards in the last 24 months. Capital One is just a little odd. We, we don't 100% know what they're looking for. So don't be offended if you don't get approved instantly. It happens to great people with credit scores over 800. I'm glad you're saying that because I would be offended. Anytime I go into review and don't have an instant approval on a card, I always feel offended, which is... <laughs> but in the travel hacking world, you kind of come to like realize, okay, this is going to happen sometimes. You're going to get sent to review. And then sometimes you still get approved for the card. It's just how, how it works sometimes. Yes, but this is also another reason why it's important to stay organized and not do things at the last minute because if you are banking on a certain card coming through for like a big purchase, you might be um, – for a big purchase that might be coming up, you need to factor in you might not get an instant approval. So factor in the time it might take for a review and then for the card to reach you and all of these kinds of things. I don't know if Capital One has an option to expedite a physical card the way that Chase does, um, but those are all things to take into consideration in this process. So Joanna, we've told people how much we love Chase cards, the Chase Sapphire Preferred. We've mentioned a little bit how we love Chase business cards. We've talked about Southwest credit cards, VentureX credit cards. You can see quickly how there are many credit cards to love, but we need help staying organized because this can... <laughs> you know, be a little tricky, like, okay, we got to meet our minimum spend or what this card gets four times points on groceries. This card gets three times points on online groceries. This card gets, you know, how do we stay organized? Give me some of your tips and tricks, because if anybody knows me personally or could actually see the video of us recording of me in my messy closet, they could know <laughs> right away that I need all the help with organization as possible. Well, okay. First of all, honesty time. Okay, guys, my entire job is keeping other people organized and I am so great at it. And for some reason, my brain views travel hacking as a job. So that organization very nicely transfers to that. But if you came to my house, you would think that you would never want to put me in charge of organizing anything ever. So you're not alone, Mary Ellen. The, the room that I'm sitting in right now is just a pile of clean clothes that might never get folded. I don't know. <laughs> At least the clothes you're surrounded by are clean. This I'm is not true. so sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I just wanted to, to put that out there right off the top. I don't think that you have to be an organizing master to stay on top of this well. I'm going to take you through the process of what I did at the very beginning, starting with before I ever even 
got my first card because it was really important to me that I wasn't making mistakes. I know that I've talked about this before, but we had a a credit card debt journey that we had to get through. So I learned a lot during that journey about making smart choices. And it's very, very important to me that if I am dabbling in the world of credit cards, I never take myself back to the place that we used to be before we got out of credit card debt. And the number one way to do that is a budget. And I know that it is not super fun to talk about, but it is important. So bear with me here. First of all, I'm so excited that you are sharing this with us and being honest about your journey, because I think that's everybody, right? I mean, when you're young, maybe people get credit cards for the first time. They're so easy to, it's very easy to get in debt for various reasons, not even just overspending. There is real medical debt that people have. There's all kinds of legitimate reasons why at different times you, you find yourself in debt. And so the fact that you guys um, really went through that debt-free journey is awesome, number one. And I love now that you can share it with others and empower them that, well, number one, you can do it. And then number two, you can then move on to something like travel hacking because now you know how to use credit cards really responsibly and you have a kind of a clean slate to move forward. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. It is not something that I am ashamed to talk about at all um, because I think it is so important for people to hear success stories. I know that while I was doing it, the one thing that kept me going was hearing people talk about their debt-free journeys and you know talk about hundreds of thousands of dollars of all these different kinds of debt that people have gotten out of with smaller salaries than I had. And it helped me stay focused. And, you know, if I had known about travel hacking during all of this, that probably would have been something that I would have put on my goals for myself. Like you have to get out of this so that you can start experiencing those kinds of things. And I do want to just reiterate that it is important that you don't get into this hobby if you do not feel that credit cards are a safe choice for you. I know that sounds very intense. I just want to make sure that you don't get swept up in the excitement of all of this and put yourself into a position where you're doing something that is triggering for you. And for some people, credit cards are not a good option because they do not have the self-control to maintain them. And that is okay. You just need to know that about yourself. If that is you, then maybe you're going to travel hack by pursuing bank bonuses and things like that. And it's okay. Some people struggle with substances, with alcohol, with binge eating. There are always going to be things in life that are hard for us to control, and you need to know that about yourself. And I would never want to encourage anyone to pursue this hobby if it was going to put them in a hole. So I just felt like I had to say that. I know it's really serious. Amen. But it's it's I, close to my heart, and I feel like I have to say it out loud. I I totally agree, and our we want to take people kind of on this travel hacking journey with us and empower them to do it for their families. But we absolutely do not want any families to go into debt because of trying to take vacations that they and use credit cards that they're not ready to use. So thank you absolutely. Please make sure you're paying off your balances every single month. And if you're not in a place where you can do that right now, that's okay. Learn. Um, Joe's going to take us on some tools that can help us organize so that we don't accidentally find ourselves in a place like that. So tell us more, Joe, Anna, what are some of your favorite tips or tricks to stay on top of the money? Make sure you don't spend too much. Starting right off the top, I went through every transaction in my bank account, okay? And I made a spreadsheet. I'm not even a great spreadsheet maker. That is you, but I did it. And I took each one and I ranked it by the date that it was due, how much the amount was, what the company was, and then whether or not it could be put on a credit card. Because that is very important to know. You might have a budget of your expenses every month, but maybe only 50% of them can actually be put on a credit card. And it's really important to know that number. So I literally went through and I made a spreadsheet of every single known amount of bills that we had. And then I estimated in terms of food, gas, that kind of stuff. And I have it all in one place in front of my face. 
This is really important for understanding whether or not you can meet a minimum spending requirement, right, on a credit. So when we talk about these credit cards like the Venture X that has a $4,000 minimum spend over three months, that's why you want to do this. You want mm-hmm. to really organize, hey, okay, realistically without because you don't want to manufacture extra spending. That's when you get into debt, right? You don't want to spend more than you normally would. So by doing this and really figuring out, okay, how much do we normally spend? Is it realistic that we can meet this minimum spend or not? Exactly. And that is why I did this before I ever applied for a new card. That's exactly the reason. Once I was finished, I took everything that could be put on a card, I totaled, I totaled it up, and then I multiplied it by three. And so our expenses every month that can be put on a credit card are about $2,200. So I tend to only go for cards that have 6000 or less in minimum spends in three months. Now, I'm going to put it out there that there are other ways to do spend that are completely legitimate, such as buying groups, but that is really travel hacking 201. That is next level. You have to be very organized. You have to be very careful. There is some risk involved. So I'm not recommending that people go out and do it. I just want you to know that that is a thing that people do in order to attain some of these higher minimum spend cards. And maybe we'll talk about that in the future if people are interested. But in general, you just want to be focusing on the expenses that you already have that you know you can pay off in full every month that can be put on a credit card. So that's what I did. I also want to add that while I was doing this, I made a separate spreadsheet with every single company login so that anytime I want to log in and switch to a new card, if I'm working on a new spend, my information is right there. I was not good at that before. I had it oh all my saved gosh. in my phone. So many passwords. So, the struggle of my life. Right. And I let my phone remember them most of the time. But if you somehow get logged out and then your phone doesn't remember and you have to go through the I forgot my password process. Oh my gosh, it it was a nightmare. So getting all these on a spreadsheet, it's so quick for me to go in and, and change everything over to a new card. It's very easy. There are a few apps that you can use for budgeting that I've personally tried and I like. I know a lot of people in the travel hacking community do the uh, YNAB, Y-N-A-B app, which it stands for You Need a Budget. It wasn't my favorite because it costs money. I prefer the Every Dollar app, which is a really cool budgeting app that has a free version, and the free version is great. And you can go in and you assign every single dollar of your budget a place. If it's not a specific bill, it's this is going to my travel fund, this is going to my emergency fund. It really helps you see a really clear picture right in front of your face of your money and where it's going. Now, that is created by Ramsey Solutions, and they are very anti-credit card. So, um, you know, there is a little you know, conflicting in terms of I love to follow the Ramsey stuff until we get to the point of credit cards, and then I kind of branch off from them. So, I have had great success with that budgeting app, and I I really like it. I'm glad you mentioned it because my family for years used Mint.com. I'm not sure if anyone else has used Mint, but they closed down recently. They got, I guess, bought out or something. So we have actually been looking for the next app that we want to use now that Mint is no longer. Well, this is a pitch for somebody else, but Every Dollar is currently offering, I think, three free months of their premium to Mint users who are switching over. Oh, so you might want to you might want to look into that because I just heard about that recently. So I um, sure will. Yeah, it's a fantastic budgeting app. So moving on from the budgeting side of stuff to the travel hacking side of stuff, I want to talk through staying organized in terms of once you get a bunch of cards. It can be a little bit difficult to figure out which cards to use for which things, to know where you're at with meeting your minimum spends and how many points you've earned and all of that kind of stuff. So I do want to mention the Travel Freely app, which a lot of people in this community know and love. So it is a a totally free app, which is so nice. And when you get new cards and even your old cards, you go in and you put them in, you put the date that you got them. 
which is really, really important. So you might have to go back through your email and figure out when you got cards. But this way, it can keep a very accurate picture of what your 524 is. And it has it right on there for you. It will even show you like your four of 24. And then here's the date that these cards are going to fall off your status. That is so nice and so helpful. It also has a bonus tracker for you. It will tell you how many bonus points you've earned. It will tell you when you have a bonus deadline coming up. It will tell you when you have an annual fee coming up. It is a really great tool for seeing everything in one place, which really does help you stay on top of these cards. Yeah, I have used it too. I don't look on it super often. But when I get a new card, I do kind of log it in there so that I can keep up keep up with 524 and just seeing everything in one place. So it's something I log into every once in a while, but it's super helpful for just seeing all of my cards in one place. Yeah, I don't log into it a lot either. It's just something that I put a new card in when I get it. And then sometimes if I need to remind myself like when my 524 status is going to be changing, it's such an easy place to just go and check that. Another thing that I do to help myself stay organized in terms of what cards are good for what things I buy those little yard sale stickers from the dollar store. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. (laughs) I love that. I have been meaning to do this. Please share this tip because I have been meaning to do this for months and I love it. It's so awesome. Now, you can actually buy stickers made for this where it's got like a little airplane on it or, you know, I guess I should tell you what they're for first. So these stickers go on your credit cards to remind you what categories you get better spend in. So like I said, you can buy ones that are made specifically for this, but you don't have to. And we love a budget-friendly tip. So go to the dollar store, get your bright neon circular stickers, and then you can either create a, a color code system yourself, like, you know, pink is airlines and green is gas or whatever. It's it's totally up to you how you want to do that. I haven't even really color coded them. I just write on them. And I write like 2x gas in my little tiny handwriting. Or sometimes if it's too long, I'll come up with a with a shorthand like groceries is gr, you know, and then I stick them on my card so that if I am in line at the grocery store and I have to make a quick decision and I haven't thought through which card I'm going to use, I can flip through those and I bend the sticker over the top of the card. So it's half on the back and half on the front. Oh my goodness, that's next level. Well, then you can see it right from the top because mine, mine, I'm looking down into a little pouch that has all the cards. So that way I just right away can figure out which one to grab And it's so easy and allows you to stay on top of it. Now, if you're working on a minimum spend, obviously you always want to use the card that you're working on that spend for. Right. But if you're in a period of maintenance where you're not, you want to be making the best choices in terms of what points. If you can get 5x on something, 3x on something versus just one time the point, you want to be able to stay on top of that. And that can be overwhelming for people if you have five cards, 10 cards, even three cards. Yeah, I was just going to get out my label maker. I have one buried somewhere. I'm one of these people who's ADD, like I get on kicks with things, right? So I buy a label maker and I like label everything and labeling is in one week. And then the next week I've moved on to something else and I'm all in for something else. Yes. But I was I was going to label them, but now I want to do the coloring over the edge of the thing so that I can see it from the top of my wallet, like you said. It's very nice. And uh, I just have to say that I fully identify with the ADHD hyper focus. Oh, I yes. know all about those. I am it's that It's a person. beautiful thing. Okay. I'm going to say it's a powerful, beautiful thing because when I'm hyper-focused, you cannot beat me. I am going all in. This is this is true. I mean, uh, travel hacking started for me as a hyper-focus and it has become a lifelong passion, which I love. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anything else that can keep us organized this year? I've already got my to-do list that I need to go do. <laughs> I did um, want to mention kind of the fun part of this, which is, you know, keeping your bucket list and your dreams list about where you actually want to go 
And for this, I'm really not as organized as in other areas. I keep it in the notepad on my phone. And that works totally fine for me. I call it trip dreams. And anytime I have a place that I want to go, I list the place, um, the city, what airlines go there, what hotels have footprints there. And that's kind of a a strong list. I feel pretty good about it. And then any time that I am in the travel hacking community, whether it be on Facebook or listening to other podcasts or having conversations, and I hear about an award flight to the place that I want to go, I pop it in that list. So, you know, oh. maybe I'm maybe I'm finding out that the, the, from um, JFK to Manchester, there's regularly a, a 35,000 point economy seat on you know, whatever airline, I jot that down underneath that that trip dream so that I know where to go back and start looking. And I that know- That is so smart. And I, yeah, I, I mean, it's really been helpful for me because it helps me figure out which cards I need to be opening. So I have my planned out cards already basically for the entire next year because I already know which trips I'm prioritizing, which pools of points I'm prioritizing. And so that really allows me to know exactly which cards I need. So I think that, like I said, it's not the most glamorous, but staying organized, having a budget, using the tools at your disposal, it's going to help you be the most successful and really reach all of these travel dreams that are important for you. I love that everyday families with normal spending can do this. This is not a hobby that is just for people who spend bukus and bukus of money. This is your regular budget, normal spending. You can figure out what is needed for the minimum spend on a sign up bonus for a new card. You get those points and you start planning a trip. Like everyday families can absolutely do this. And I I just appreciate you making it very accessible for everybody because it's so, you think, oh, I don't know, maybe this isn't for me, but you can do this. Everybody can do this. Takes a little bit of organization and the regular spending that you're already doing and you can get these great vacations. I love it, Joanna. I love it too. It's really why I'm so passionate about this because people need to travel. It is good for the soul and everyone can do it. And I literally want everyone in the world to know. It blows my mind that there are so many people that still do not know that this is even a thing. And we want to tell all of them. So that is why we are here. And we're so glad that you are here with us on this journey. So don't forget to follow us over on Instagram. Mary Ellen, where can we find you? Yes, you can find me at Family Travel for the Win with the number four. And Joanna, where can they find you? They can find me at Hacking Our Wanderlust, O U R, over on Instagram. And do not forget to email us your questions, even if you don't want a question to be featured in the episode. If you want a consultation from us on car choices for your family, if you want to talk budgets, any of that stuff, we are here for you. We would love to answer your questions. So don't be afraid to send us those emails. Emails. Again, that's hacking your wanderlust at Gmail. We hope you guys have the happiest of New Year's, and we will see you next time.